Ah, Sailor Moon. I always want to say, like, the queen of magical girls is back, because I've been really enjoying these episodes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could kind of call her the queen of magical girls, even though she doesn't actually become a queen till the future when she's Neo Queen Serenity and apparently loses almost all the power she had as Sailor Moon, which makes <laughs> absolutely no sense. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal, Season 3. Episodes 29 and 30. Well, two fun episodes, a lot of interesting things going on, and what is it with everyone wanting to get with Sailor Moon? I mean, really, I mean, it's this kissing, and it's like, I, uh, I, it, what? <laughs> I don't know. She's not my type, but everyone goes after Sailor Moon. <laughs> Tuxedo Mask, Prince Diamond... <laughs> Ruka. <laughs> and why are the outer Sailor Scouts being so aloof? I'm like, what's going on here? Also, as I was doing research for images to draw for this, I keep like seeing that the outer Scouts are associated with Chibi Moon and the inner Scouts are associated with Sailor Moon. I will neither confirm nor deny anything because amazingly, Lux can still be spoiled on Sailor Moon. Yeah, I just like the flow so far. It's interesting. It's the animation is nice. The characters are nice. Poor Sailor Jupiter. <laughs> <laughs> but she does make an awesome cake, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. Also, poor Sailor Mars. Like, I just... Did, why did you guys track me down? <laughs> because it's your birthday and we're your friends. Yeah, but I came here to check this out. And you didn't tell us? Well, I thought we should protect Sailor Moon. Mm, good point. All right, let's go take care of this. And then what happens? The two of them get in over their heads, and Sailor Moon has to save them. Yeah, I'm like, why do they want to protect Sailor Moon? She does a perfectly good job of protecting herself, unless it's story why she needs to be saved by someone. Because <laughs> she has the strongest powers. So as long as she doesn't get to the point where she's using the powers at a level that could actually kill her, kind of let her take the lead. <laughs> but then all the fight sequences would be a lot shorter. Also, I didn't quite catch it, but when is... Sailor Mars's birthday. April something. April 17th, I believe, because it's her 15th birthday. My god, these girls are young. <laughs> so, any nitpicks for this episode? What are the differences? I'll probably think of more stuff to say myself along the way. Yes, there were differences, but let's start with the comment that the girls make after Mako-chan is thrown by Haruka in the gym about how dare he use full force against a girl that is in the comic by the way but it is one line that i really would have liked them to have kept out of this iteration because it really goes against the opening title sequence from the first two series that line about we're not helpless girls waiting around to be rescued by the prince like yeah gender shouldn't come into it because you are strong women isn't that what we've tried to establish here? Yeah, it was. Like, it stood out to me, too. It's like, wait, why are you... This is Sailor Moon, right? This is a modern version of the Sailor Moon that's happening in this modern era. You couldn't have just... I know it would be not following the manga that closely, but taking it out or changing it slightly probably wouldn't have hurt. <laughs> yeah, because they could have still kept a similar comment about, you know, using full strength against someone who's not experienced in that fighting style. So, should we move on to the differences now? Sure, why not? <laughs> so, it's mainly things that were slightly skipped. When Mars and Jupiter observe the Mugen Academy students, they first purify themselves in the waterfall. We skip straight to the bonfire. Also, that member of Witches 5 turned into a Medusa-style snake monster. We skip that transformation. And then we have the continuing trend, yes, I know it ended in episode 30, at least for now, of going a few pages into the next chapter of the manga. Because hmm. Sailor Moon following Sailor Uranus as she runs off, and the kiss actually were the lead off to the next chapter. Though it does hmm. make a good episode end, so I only point out as a difference. I'm not saying it was a bad thing. Because mm -hmm. I was sitting there... 
because my, my reaction to that scene was like kissing really I, I have no problem with you know them kissing each other but the problem is like well what <laughs> but anyway, that whole thing with Sailor Moon was like everyone wants to get with Sailor Moon okay no wonder fans kind of shipped this girl seven ways till Sunday <laughs> well the thing that doesn't make sense for me with Aruka and Mirchu ah god I'm still butchering her name Sailor Neptune you guys know mm -hmm. who I mean so if you're in a relationship why are you kissing someone else mm -hmm. Sailor Moon has always been the recipient of unsolicited kisses so that's not the same because she didn't go and kiss Haruka Haruka kissed her mm -hmm. I guess we're moving on to the next episode which was really interesting we get to find out more about Hataru and kind of interesting how Hataru just kind of blurts out like I haven't known you very long but my Father may be doing evil experiments in the basement. Yeah. But this is probably a good thing for me to tell you because I know that you're a Sailor Scout. Mm -hmm. Like, my parents an evil overlord. Can you fix that? Just don't hurt him. He really is a good man. Yeah. You have that, like, magical scepter thing, right? That's kind of like the elements of harmony. They'll purify people and make them nice again. Could you do that? Or, or, or would he disappear because he may not have been nice at one point and he may just be using me for something? I don't know. <laughs> Also, the glasses that guy's wearing, like, really? Really? I think it's a pentagram in one eye. You'll learn more later. Mm -hmm. Of course. <laughs> I just feel badly that this arc never sticks very well in my memory. For the most part, my brain skips right over this and goes straight to the Helios arc. <laughs> yes, I was into unicorns when I was younger, okay? So were most girls. <laughs> eh, well, at least you get to um, have some reveals and stuff like that as you watch slash reread again. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like the huge reveals that you get. <laughs> oh yeah, and another thing that surprised me about this episode is like, wow, we get some Sailor V references. Okay, a thing I need to like somehow go back and track down. Thank you, internet. <laughs> it's only two volumes long. <laughs> also, Sailor Venice is apparently a really big fan of that pop star slash evil person. <laughs> God, fangirling much? Mina is a fan of idols, period. <laughs> you would know more of this as you had read the Sailor V mangas. Also, one of the things that was edited, I can't necessarily say edited, but difference between the anime and the manga is they devoted a little more time in the manga to the fact that Mina is totally obsessed with idols. Any idol. <laughs> I also like the touch during the fight scene uh, where everyone shows up, including Tuxedo Mask, with a mask. <laughs> like, what, does he just keep that thing in his pocket? Because I'm pretty sure he doesn't have a transform pendant of any kind. <laughs> or transform item of any kind. Yeah, he doesn't have a transformation item. Though in the first iteration of the anime, we do get a transformation sequence for him. Also note that he didn't have the top hat. He also didn't have it in the manga. Hey, but he did have a cape. <laughs> Mm -hmm. He was already dressed in a tux. Yeah, but not the usual cut of the one he wears for battle. I would say who fights in a tuxedo, but who fights in a sailor schoolgirl uniform? <laughs> Some things in anime you just have to accept. Mm -hmm. I also like the little interesting fact that they got a lot of tickets. <laughs> so did they expect Tuxedo Mass to take Sailor Moon, or were they expecting Sailor Moon to get Tickets, because both of those two have to talk, so they should have known the exact number of tickets to give them and to who, so it's so interesting how they ended up with the exact number of tickets they needed for all the Sailor Scouts to end up there, but... Yes, but the two of them may have been looking at things from different perspectives. What I want to know is, why on earth did you want them to come to the concert when you keep warning them away? That makes no sense. Mitru giving... Mamoru, two tickets makes sense. Himself and a plus one. Haruka giving Sailor Moon five tickets makes sense because he's seen her with her four friends. He, she, <laughs> has never seen Usagi with Mamoru. So all logically makes sense. And it was possible that Mamoru could have taken Usagi instead and Chibiusa could have taken one of the tickets that came from Haruka, either way, you end up with the final correct total number of people. Mm -hmm. 
just like find that interesting. It's like, oh, did they realize something was going to happen? Or were they just trying to get all of them to that concert? Were they doing it for any particular reason? Also, it seems like both of them somehow know that those two are together in some way. And in a way, like doing things that make them question their relationship. Because Sailor Moon's kind of going, really? <laughs> on multiple occasions. I should say in multiple ways. Because, like, okay, I just got this. And then I see him with the, should I, what? <laughs> Relationships. Confusing in all forms of media because they don't know how to write them correctly. <laughs> they're confusing because they're confusing. <laughs> ah. So, other than the first couple of pages ending up in the previous episode, what are the differences? <laughs> okay, Sailor B's compact. In the manga, it's a plain crescent. In this version, it was decorated. The really big nitpicks, we missed out on a little bit of exposition. And Mimi's fight with the scouts was very different. Hmm. She didn't call those daemon herself. She begged Kellanite for help, and Kellanite was absolutely disgusted with her and sent three immature daemons to assist her because they hadn't had long enough to develop properly. Also, the manga gives us a reminder that Mimi is only level 40, so by the Deathbuster and Witches 5 ranking, she was actually weaker than the fire member of the Witches 5 that we defeated in the previous episode. And there was a little bit of exposition uh, for Kalanite when she was by the water mirror about um, the Tauron crystal. Yes, I know I'm pronouncing it incorrectly. Thank you, Internet. About <laughs> their crystal and what their goal was, which was to turn this Omega area into another, you know, star system like theirs. So we finally got some of their motive, where here it's just. Mm, we have our own crystal. Kellanite has now noticed how powerful your the legendary silver crystal is. So, on top of what her master actually told her to do, she's going to get it just cause. And they're still trying to figure out what's going on with the three talismans and, you know, the deity of destruction. And everyone keeps having that dream. <laughs> we gotta get the talismans. What are the talismans? We need talismans. I know I'm based on, since I'm doing research for drawing, based on what I've done, I'm pretty sure I know two of the talismans. You are correct. <laughs> that mirror and a sword, I believe, is another one. Yes, and you see both of those in the closing credits, which I'm surprised you didn't use for image references. And something I'm kind of confused about is probably because of all the versions of Sailor Moon, but I also found references to it in the manga both ways the sword seems to have two different shapes <laughs> and not just between versions of the show and the manga but in the manga itself i found a reference from the manga that had the sword short and curvy and i also found a reference from the manga that had it long and uh, similar to the way it looks at the in the end credits yes both from the manga no comment <laughs> so i'm like which one do i draw <laughs> so i just said since the hilt's pretty much the same, I'm going to draw both. <laughs> See, and I would have just drawn the one, the version that was in the end credits and the in-betweens in the episodes because that's obviously the one that's being focused on at this particular moment. <laughs> I got more stuff to draw. Jeez. And it took, like, no extra time, so. <laughs> if you say so. I mean, you still have the silence glaive to draw. So, just out of curiosity, any nitpicks on the episodes themselves other than the one you just pointed out with this one? Because I don't remember you pointing out any nitpicks with the previous episode. Well, other than the whole girl thing. <laughs> I pointed out several nitpicks in terms of the differences between the anime and the manga. Like I said, the season seems to have the most deviations. Not that they're bad, just different. And speaking of deviations, they did some more shortening. The handkerchief that Chibiusa took back to Hataru wasn't actually her handkerchief. It was a brand new one because they couldn't get the blood stains out of the old one. Which doesn't even make logical sense because Hataru completely healed the injury. And when they show the skin, it looks like it's clean of blood, even though the healing shouldn't have removed the blood, you know, that was staining the outside of the body. But yeah, I think they had to do some shortening to get it back in line 
with the timing. Mm -hmm. Matters make the timing feel better in the anime itself. Yeah, well, it really doesn't serve any purpose to go, oh, we couldn't get the bloodstains out of this handkerchief, so I bought you a new one. That doesn't really change the important fact, which is Chibiusa did this kindness by bringing the handkerchief back to Hotaru. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, and then there's the other part of, my magical MacGuffin heals you, isn't it? Isn't that nice? It protects everyone. Mm hmm Because Hitaru's magical MacGuffin isn't as good. Mm hmm And as if we didn't already guess slash know that the mirror and the sword were talismans, during the helicopter ride home, Michiru calls her mirror a talisman. In some little technical details here, they should have done some filters on the voices of the girls when they're in the helicopter to make them sound more like they're being heard over a radio, because you don't actually hear anything inside of a helicopter you're, um, unless you have those earphones on and then you hear it through a, a kind of a radio transmission. So I would have liked to a little bit have a, a little bit of audio special effect there to make them smor sound more like they're talking over the radios that, that they're clearly wearing. Also, like, a helicopter! Chibiusa! Strangers! I know they said they know her! <laughs> but if you think about that, the enemies could say the exact same thing and be telling just as much truth. Uh, also, her design was very feminine this time compared to all other times they've shown her, which is very male. So that's interesting. I'm talking about, Well, uh, did you not notice the part where she was wearing a skirt? And dead silence. Yes, while they were in the helicopter, Haruka was wearing a skirt. I did not notice the skirt, but I noticed the shirt and the way it was cut and how, like, they actually drawing her having cleavage. Because <laughs> they've shown her in outfits before that would have shown cleavage, but no cleavage. But in this outfit, cleavage. Also, she's more rounded and more feminine drawn compared to back in the previous episode where she was tossing poor, say, the Jupiter around. <laughs> yes, but one that was in her... Boy guys, too, it's hard to look feminine in a gi because it's such a heavy fabric. Three, look specifically at the clothing that she was drawn wearing. It has a more feminine cut, and the scarf helps add the illusion of depth. Mm -hmm. Well, these two episodes are really nice. We're getting more depth, more interesting stuff going on, more talk about these talismans, more stuff I'm like piecing together based on little bits of information I've heard over time before I actually got to this part of the arc. Because, like I said before, I've never read or watched this part before in the original releases. So I'm definitely looking forward to what's happening next. <laughs> well, you know, the original edited release of the anime for this arc was rather severely butchered, so... You're not missing much there, but all the subtitled episodes have been released online now, even though we can't buy all the DVDs yet. So you could do a comparative look at the two arcs, except it would take three times as long because the original Sailor Moon had more filler. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal, Season 3, Episodes 29 and 30. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this, please consider subscribing. I would love you to subscribe. It would be wonderful. I like subscriptions, please. If you like my art, you can find me on Tumblr and DeviantArt. If you really like my art and want to support me to continue doing it, I have a Patreon. I also have commissions. Please check link for commission availability.